Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum today. We have a great guest. We are going to talk about marriage today. Mm -hmm. uh, we have John Thurman, who is really what nationally are... renowned in terms of providing marriage guidance and wisdom and a great workshop coming up here in Albuquerque. Get ready for it. He has a wealth of knowledge. You're not going to want to miss it. We have two segments with him today, yeah, which is super exciting. So stay with us and we'll be right back. We're privileged to have with us today John Thurman. John, thank you for coming back by and joining us on Spectrum today. Great to be here. Really a joy to be with you guys again. It's, it's a always fun. Yes, it, it is. It is fun, and it's fun to, to be able to, le to learn. John is a great resource. Today we're going to talk a little bit about marriage. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I want to kind of just kick us off today by uh, asking <laughs> a question about mindsets in marriage. You know, sure. When, when you think of your marriage, how does what you're thinking affect affect oh, the, relationship. the relationship. You know, it's everything. And, and two mindsets, one is like a fixed mindset. And we'll see a lot of Christians struggle with this. Well, you know, uh, this is the way God made me. I'm predetermined oh, yeah. and predestined right. to be this. I can't oh, make yeah. any changes. What a hopeless position to be in. <laughs> Yes. Uh, you know, I believe that God is a God of change. He's a God of, who confronts us where we are, but not in a way to hammer us, but in a way to draw us out and help us become more like his. Mm -hmm. But this fixed mindset says, this is it. This is all I am. What I've got is what I've got to work with. That's it, period. Mm -hmm. And if you follow that train of thought into a marriage, you can get you into some really deep trouble. Right. For example, I remember I've got over 53,000 hours in the counselor's chair. And I can't tell you the number of times I've heard clients say, well, you know, my spouse has this character flaw. Mm. They have these issues. Mm -hmm. They have a past. And I'm kind of like, who doesn't? Exactly. Who does not have a past? And some character flaws. And some honest. character flaws, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's just go to the book of Romans for that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the neat thing is we are all broken. Mm -hmm. Jesus knows that. Yeah. And as soon as we kind of are aware of that, he can really do some work. But that fixed mindset says, this is the way it is. I can't change. My spouse can't change. We're stuck. Wow. Mm. Whereas a growth mindset says, yeah, I messed up. Yeah, I have some character flaws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have some issues in my past. Mm -hmm. But God's a God of change. He's a God of creation. He's a sustainer and creator of the universe. That's good. He says that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. He said he would never leave me nor forsake me. You know, that's a pretty good that's a pretty good thing. So Amen. in a marriage, if you have a growth mindset, that means, you know, my partner's not perfect. I'm not perfect. Jesus is. Holy Spirit's in them. Holy Spirit's in me. Why don't we try to work together? So a growth mindset, whether it's individual life stuff mm -hmm. or trauma or tragedy you're dealing with, mm -hmm. is always going to lead to good places. Amen. If we look at the scriptures, we yeah. see God's a God of hope. Yes. He's yes. a God yes. of encouragement. Yes. He lifts us up. He doesn't tear us down. But that, yeah. that fixed mindset gets stuck. Mm -hmm. The growth mindset in a marriage says, you know what? I'm not perfect. My wife's not perfect. But Jesus is. And yeah. together as a couple, we're going to hope to be more like him that's, through his transform transforming power. And that's God. what I was thinking, being more like Christ in that he forgives yes. over and over again. Yes. So we need to be more like that in our, in our life with our spouse. It's so true. Forgiving. Because bitterness is one of the things that kills a marriage. Oh, yeah. Bitterness and resentment, holding on to hurts. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had, a, I had a son, and he was about eight years old. I had to remind him, son, quit picking it or it won't heal. Mm -hmm. And yet so many times in marriage, we pick at the scabs of old wounds. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't honor God. If anything, that kind of gives the enemy a stronghold. Open right, door. exactly. We yeah. can speak bad things into us. Yes. John, you know, most couples want intimacy in their in their mm -hmm. marriage and but you know what there's there's a lot of different aspects yes. of intimacy Types. isn't there talk to us about some of those sure things. you know when we hear the word intimacy a lot of people go oh you're talking about sex i'm mm -hmm. going well that's a that's a very important part if you sure don't believe part it, of it absolutely just read the song of solomon because uh -huh. <laughs> you won't hear too yes. many pastors do expository preaching out of that book. No, you don't. <laughs> I'm not sure I've heard any. Uh, well, I've heard one, and it was really nice. It was really good. But you have, uh, you have there are about five types of intimacy. There's a whole idea of intellectual intimacy mm -hmm. to where you and your spouse can discuss current events, mm -hmm. like uh, whether you like certain news stations or not, or right. certain okay. political people. Okay. Sure. So there's that intellectual. There's that social intimacy where, like, I have some of my friends 
my wife Angie has some of her friends, and then we have some of our friends. friends. Mm -hmm. And so there's that idea of being connected, and I'm not talking about connected on Facebook, Instagram, right. or, or any of those <laughs> things. I'm talking about eyeball to eyeball, For skin sure. to skin yes. uh, relationships. And so that idea of social intimacy is that I'm connected, my spouse is connected, and then we're connected with others. Because mm -hmm. that gives you balance. You know, uh, I have a couple of friends I have accountability with, and these are the guys that will uh, tell you the truth about you, whether you want to hear it or not. Mm -hmm. mm. You need friends like that. You do. You, do. you know, we yeah. need, uh, from a biblical perspective, we need a Paul mm -hmm. who's stretching us mm -hmm. a lot like your dad stretched a lot of people with his ministry and his yeah. preaching and his presence. Then we need a Timothy that someone we're bringing along. But we need a Barnabas, too. And a Barnabas is that friend who can come up and tap you on the chest and go, you're out of bounds. Mm. And so as we look at developing that whole idea of relational or social intimacy, it's those having those friends, those accountability right. partners, and a lot of acquaintances. And staying focused maybe on the friends that you have in common a little yes. more than the others. Because yes. a lot of times that can be your focus. This is my friend. These are my relationships, yes. which excludes your spouse. And you know, and I'll probably get in trouble for this, but you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> Women are worse about that than mm -hmm. guys are. Because mm -hmm. most of us guys maybe have two or three friends. It's true. But in church if lots we're fortunate. Of, <laughs> if we're fortunate, yeah, who will love us where Buddies. we are. Buddies. And uh, and yet lots of times I'll see women, uh, not all women, but several women in the church who will kind of use their friends as a way to avoid dealing with anything. Yeah. Interesting. I wonder why we yeah. do that. I had a friend one time, she said, well, I'm in all these Bible studies. I don't know why my husband can't be more spiritual. I said, oh. well, he's working hard to make mm -hmm. money so you don't have to work. There you go. So, so oh. don't ping him for you going, to, you going to five Bible studies a week when he's working 50, 60 hours a week to support your lifestyle. She's wow. kind of like, yeah. Okay. We need word. to hear it sometimes. So we got uh, intellectual, mm -hmm. we got social. Then there's the whole idea of, uh, I'm going to skip one of them, of spiritual intimacy. Okay. And you know, that's probably the hardest to define because depending on what church you go to mm -hmm. and what group you're with, that can mean everywhere from being here every time the church doors are open mm -hmm. to participate, participating in Bible study and prayer. But really, it's whatever a couple does that enhances their relationship to Christ. And yeah. if we aren't careful, we can get into a checklist on that. We don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then the final is physical intimacy. Mm -hmm. And the scripture is really big on that, particularly in the Song of Solomon. Mm -hmm. And I believe if the person is one of these other areas, the social, the uh, intellectual, the recreational, having fun together, and the spiritual, the, the physical intimacy piece of the puzzle, really can be very dynamic mm -hmm. and very exciting mm -hmm. uh, as we sometimes experience what Adam and Eve did and they were naked and unafraid and unashamed. Mm -hmm. That's great. Good stuff. Let's talk about some of the things that, we're talking about things that can build up your marriage, but maybe some of the things that can kill your marriage. Yeah. Three big marriage killers are resentment, and that's anger that hasn't been processed. The second one is holding a grudge, which is very similar. Uh, the next thing can be, oh, my partner has a character flaw. Yeah. And the third one can be spiritual superiority. I think, see, th those things to me are selfish things. They really are. I, I'm thinking about, about myself. I'm not thinking about the other person. No. You're kind of setting yourself up. Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, the scriptures have a really interesting concept about that. Pride comes before a face plant. Uh-huh. That's right. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. This is Thurman's unpublished no, yeah. translation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, yeah, that was the... That's the, the, true. the the new applicable version. Right, right. you can use that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. Uh, John, maybe you have, you have a few minutes you can stay with us into a second segment today? Sure, yeah. All right, well, we're, then we're going to jump into uh, a thought here. When, when you're talking uh, about some quick things that couples can do, what can they do to kind of make it a little bit better? And we'll kind of end this segment on that. How can you enhance your marriage, son? Turn towards each other. So many times when we're conflicted, we turn to the side or turn away. And the biggest thing you do is turn towards your spouse. The easiest and cheapest thing to do is turn towards your spouse and say, only now, guys, this is good for guys. Guys tell their wives, only now am I realizing how deeply I hurt you by what I did the other day. Oh, See, when a man does that, good. he's not trying to play it up. Mm -hmm. The wife will know you mean business when you say that because in saying that, you're like, I realize I hurt you by what I did the other mm -hmm. night. Will you forgive me? A wife has a hard time not releasing that. But if you come in, well, if I did anything wrong, I'm sorry. That right. is so lame. And that's not <clears> sincere. <throat> it's not sincere. And then for women, the best thing you do for your husband is catch him doing stuff right. That's good. Catch him doing stuff right. And, and just out of nowhere, say, you know, honey, 
I appreciate the way you provide for us. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the way you love our children. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the way you love me. That's good. Mm -hmm. And what we guys will do, we'll be kind of like, what? And so men have three basic needs. That's to feel competent, needed, and respected. Women have three basic needs, and that's to feel valued, mm -hmm. cherished, and secure. Mm -hmm. So we want to find anything we can do to edify each other in that. That's great. Well, some great things talking to us about our marriages today. And, and John's uh, gracious enough to stay with us, so we're going to come back to him in just a minute. We'll be right back. A quick break and talk to you a little bit about the importance of giving here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting. Some of you are so faithful. Some of you have never maybe had a chance to give, but you are thinking about how even this program today, talking about our marriages, is really encouraging and blessing our spirits and blessing our hearts. You know, the family programming that we provide here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting is possible in part by viewers just like you giving on an ongoing basis. The $32 a month amount makes a huge difference with our family entertainment programming. Uh, if you're giving to Family Safe Haven in the afternoons and on Saturday afternoons, Monday through Friday afternoons, and then the President's Club, mm -hmm. $50, $75, and $100 makes a difference as we're having to make ongoing uh, acquisitions of equipment, repairs, and regular operational costs. And we're in the process of needing to buy a $20,000 microwave because one of the microwave systems that we have is on its last leg. Ruth, how now, are our, engaged? our engineers that do a great job they and do. so they repair they things last. and try to keep things going as long as possible. That's but right. This is something that needs to be done. Of course, you can visit us on the website at kazq32.org. Give safely on the website. You can call into the station at 505-884-8355 extension 101 to speak to someone. And we can also make that recurring We'll keep that information safe. If there's a certain day of Absolutely. the month that you would like it. us to process that payment, we can do that for you. Or you can simply mail in your donation or any kind of correspondence to us at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard, Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. If you are not on the mailing list, you need to call in and get on the mailing list today. A lot of great updates, a lot of neat new programs coming our way uh, as we have entered into 2020. Yes. Give us a call, 505-884-8355. Dial extension 101 and just tell them, I want to be on the mailing list. That way you can get monthly updates of the great things taking place. We're talking about marriages at last. Yes. What do those letters stand for? Well, you might have to help me here because okay. sometimes I get confused. But okay. first, it's having a long-term perspective. That's good. Every marriage goes through different seasons. Every marriage that I've ever known and people yeah. I've known has a springtime where things are exciting and mm -hmm. green and growing and a lot of hope and, and, and energy. Yeah. And every marriage goes through the summer where things are kind of laid back and beautiful and relaxed and, and a lot of recreating going on, a lot of just fun things happening. Mm -hmm. But every marriage has a fall. Mm. And the fall is when the leaves fall off. Mm. And the fall is when the flowers die and the grass begins to brown. Mm. And then every marriage goes through a winter. And a winter is a season where they don't like anything's happening. A lot of couples that get in trouble don't really realize they're in a winter. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not the end of the universe, it's just winter. It's just a season. When my uh, sister-in-law, who came over from the Philippines, first came to the States, she came in November, <clears throat> and she comes from this lush, tropical paradise. <laughs> mm -hmm. And one of her first comments she made when she got to America was, why are all the trees dead? Everything's dead. Mm -hmm. But that's winter. Yeah. Right. But yeah. winter is always followed by a new spring. That's good. And so having that long-term perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people spend all this money on a wedding and don't really think about what they're saying. You know, and you and I have done scores of mm -hmm. ceremonies. Right. And uh, when we were going through a winter, one of our winters, one of our many winters, 
I, I was really discouraged. And I was like, why am I even doing this? Mm -hmm. And those words came back that I said before, my oh, preacher wow. and my family and the mm -hmm. Lord and my wife, in sickness and in health, for better or for worse. Yeah. And so many times in modern marriages, we forget that part. Mm -hmm. We just want it to be eternally spring and summer. Right. Eternally better and better and better. <laughs> eternally better, uh -huh. better, gooder and gooder and gooder. Yeah. That's right. And uh, <clears throat> it does get gooder and gooder and better and better. Yeah. But the fields have to be plowed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Heart has to be turned over. Mm -hmm. Sure. Holy Spirit has to dig up some old roots and mm -hmm. break them out and burn them up. And so when you look at that long term perspective, it's like we're going to have some great times and we're going to have some pretty awful times. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to quit. That's good. And making that commitment. Yeah. So <clears throat> things that last long term. And then next is that accepting of each other. You know, one of the things, men aren't so bad about this, and I could get in trouble with this, but my perspective is that women are a little bit better than this. When we looked at our wife on the day we got married, we went, man, she is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait for the honeymoon to begin. Because mm -hmm. that's just how we are. Like, <laughs> <clears throat> Women are more like, he looks so handsome. He's, he's such a sharp guy. But boy, I've got my work cut out for me. <laughs> and so a lot of times there's this pressure women will put on men to feel like I need to mold you into the image I think you need to be mm -hmm. I was watching Sinbad one night and oh. uh, I love him and he had this he said you know if you've been married more than five years your wife dresses you it's true yeah. and to a degree it's he, true. He, they were panning the audience and they showed this guy in a pair of dockers in a striped shirt said yeah your wife dresses you said, yeah and truth be known my wife has helped me a lot with this morning mm -hmm. i said is this going to work this new yes. jacket going to work with this i said yes yes uh see that's not her trying to control me that's me receiving counsel yeah exactly <laughs> not a bad thing and so accepting thing. each other mm -hmm. warts and all that's mm -hmm. good. Uh, we've been married going on 48 years and we still have some personality quirks that just make wow. each other crazy but but yeah. that's life. It is what it is. But it, is it gets it better is. and better over time. It does. It really does. You get to know that person. You feel safe and secure with them. Yeah. Even on, on the bad days. Yeah. Even with all their quirkiness. Because mm -hmm. after all, we don't have any quirkiness. But they do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a workshop that is, is yes. coming up, don't you? It's called uh, Get a Grip on Your Marriage. Get a Grip yeah. on Good. Your Marriage. That's just kind of a bottom line. Straightforward. Get a Grip on Your Marriage. This is for anybody. It doesn't yes, matter if you're anybody. married 20 you know, years. Uh, in all my years of counseling, one of the things people told me is that, you know, you're fair, but man, you're pretty straight up. And uh, so many times in the church, we dance around things, but I want to talk I think nice. We need straight up. And uh, you know, you know, as a pastor, y'all know as leaders that there are broken, hurting marriages in mm -hmm. every congregation. Mm -hmm. Certainly. We hide it good. Yes. You know, how are you? I'm blessed. You know, really inside, no, I'm dying, man, but I'm going to give you a good face so I can mm -hmm. say, yes, I'm blessed. So, what we did a few years ago, and Angie's helped me out with this, by the way, this will be a, a seminar or workshop we're doing over at New Covenant Church, March the 7th. Doors open at 8.30, we start about 9 and end about 11.30. It's free, and we'll be talking about some key things you can do to enhance and improve your relationship and really help it go for the long term. And uh, some ways people can find out about it, they can just go to my website, johntherman.net, mm -hmm. and hit the blog page. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've got a brand new blog up called Accepting the Differences. That's good. And at the bottom of that, you can sign up for free tickets. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, it's, it's good to get going on that because that date is coming up pretty quickly. Again, Saturday, March the 7th, and that's at New Covenant Church. New right? Covenant Church. Over on Paseo. Over on Paseo, all right. All right, so remember that. And get a grip on your marriage. That's right. Yeah. You mentioned that there's something going on with a uh, e-book that you guys have. Yes, yes, we have a free e-book we've done. It's called 21 Marriage Tips, real complicated title. Yeah. <laughs> and the way you can get that uh, is just simply text the word marriage Mm -hmm. to the number 33777. Yeah. Text the word marriage to okay. 33777. You'll be able to download a PDF that basically has a summation of what we're talking about today. 21 different tips. Uh, these are things I've learned over the years, both as a clinician, as a minister, and as a husband. Mm -hmm. And uh, really good stuff. And for my pastor friends, there are a few outlines in there they can completely steal. Oh, oh wow. That's, that's nice. Excuse me. They can appropriate and, yeah. and adjust to their needs. <laughs> there you oh, go. That's good. I like that definition. There. Well, yes. I, had, I had something that came to my mind as we're talking about maybe seasons or you spoke of that earlier. Couples that are so focused on their children and then their children go to college or their children yeah. move and then you're looking at this person that you married and the focus is not the children anymore it's one another and sometimes there are things that oh, yeah. you miss along the way yeah uh, three big transition points for marriage first two years that's the highest divorce rate wow 
you're seven with children. Because mm-hmm. all of a sudden, if I roll over and go, hey, baby, and baby goes, I'm too tired, leave me alone, look what you <laughs> did to me. Yeah. Uh, and then when they leave the house, that's a real high time for affairs and wow. divorces. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, dad's just been working, supporting the kids and supporting his family. Right. And that's not to discount women who are working. But if like, you got a professional woman or a woman who's staying at home or working part time, they're in these roles. And when the kids are gone, all of a sudden they roll over and go, who are you? Mm-hmm. Because it's been 15 or 20 years. Yeah. And for that empty nest, the biggest adjustment, and you, you feel like you're stripping some gears in your, in your shifter, if you mm-hmm. will, is getting reacclimated to each other. Now, one of the biggest things that we learned in our life mm-hmm. was our connection with people in our church. That's because that's lots of times people you're doing Bible study with, mm-hmm. I kind of grew up in the old Sunday school days, yeah. but as we got older in some small groups, we were in a similar age group. So as peers, we were all kind of struggling through this together. Mm-hmm. And I found that those connections with mm-hmm. people kind of in a similar path, A, uh, was, was a great source of encouragement. Mm-hmm. B, it was also kind of a check. Uh, to make sure that you were focused on your marriage and not being distracted by that's some good. other distraction. Yes, sure. that's good. Good stuff. You know, uh, today as we've been talking to John, he's been sharing with us some real practical things. I don't think you ever fully arrive in your marriage. You have to work at mm-hmm. it. And one of the things that yeah. I heard you say, John, is the fact that you have to make the choice. Yes. Of, you know, for better, for <clears throat> worse, those are not things that are always going to be the same. Some days are going to be a lot different than the, the next day. And there's highs and there's lows and there's good times and there's bad times. Don't forget the ebook that is out there and it's available. Tell us one more time how folks can get a hold of that. You can get 21 Marriage Tips by simply texting the word marriage to 33777. 33777 via text. Text the word marriage. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. Don't forget about the upcoming event that's coming mm-hmm. on March the 7th. And this is going to be called a workshop on getting a grip on your marriage. Ruth, do you have any last questions today? You I want to ask John, this I, is your chance. No, what has <laughs> stuck with me is to, the only person I can change is me. Right. I can't change my spouse. I can't change anybody else. So how can I be a better me? Right. And stay in the word and pray and be attentive and be encouraging. Yes. Be encouraging and look for good things in your spouse. Not yes. pointing out the flaws, but right. look at, okay, he did this, but what did he do good today? This is what he did great. Yeah. And you know, if uh, I remember a friend of mine said that men are like dogs. They need three things, someone to feed them, (laughs) someone to play with them, someone to occasionally pat them on the head and say, good boy. (laughs) And so women, I I don't really want to minimize this at all, but when you catch your husband doing things right, like maybe he doesn't lead the family in prayer, maybe he doesn't read his Bible every day, but does he make sure you guys get to church? Yes. Edify him on that, because when you do that, he'll be kind of like, not in an arrogant way, but kind of like, okay, I'm doing some things right. That's good. And then he will be more open to the things of God But if you're saying, oh, you're just not spiritual, Jesus kind of talked about the importance of not pointing fingers because they come back at you. Mm -hmm. And really be intentional about catching your husband doing things right. And then Mm -hmm. for men, really making sure your wife feels valued, cherished, and secure. That's good. Yes. Our guest today, John Thurman. John's been sharing with us about marriage. Don't miss out on the upcoming workshop and take advantage of that free ebook by texting marriage to the number that we provided. Have a blessed day. As we close our time together today, let's go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I'd like us to read the first few verses there, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to focus a little bit of attention on prayer today. Okay. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live, live peaceable and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand truth. 
You know, we read this in our personal mm -hmm. devotions earlier, and the Lord spoke to me about this. Look at what it says at the very beginning. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Mm -hmm. Th that's all-inclusive, all people. And I think the thing that hit me, Ruth, was the fact that there's some people that I don't, if I'm being honest, there's some people that because of their behavior, because of their belief system, because of their attitude, I don't really care for them that much. But that does not mean that I can't pray for, uh, that I should not pray for them. In fact, the Lord tells us in his word to pray for them. And then it says, ask God to help them mm -hmm. intercede on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Man, you know, when I was thinking about that this morning in my personal devotions, I had to stop and pray for some people that I, I that really, the things that they adhere to, I struggle with them uh, greatly. Mm -hmm. They're unbiblical. They're, they're doing things that aren't right. But I spent some time praying for some of those people because it says to. And the latter part of that says, and give thanks for them. Ooh, there, that's right. It does. <laughs> that's good. And that's give right. thanks for them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Then it gives us a little bit of definition. It says, pray for those uh, for kings, this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. If memory serves me uh, on the historical basis of this account, this was during the time of King of, of Nero. What, what a terrible leader. How would you want to pray for him? Mm -hmm. But that's not the instruction that, that Paul gives to Timothy not to pray. He says, pray for him because we need to believe God to touch the spirit, to touch the life that is there. It goes on to say, this please, is good and pleases God our Savior. Mm -hmm. And then the very last thing, and this, this I think is one that really should help compel us. Mm -hmm. God wants everyone to be saved. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's good. It also does something for you internally when you pray for someone because it changes your heart toward them, yes, I believe, and over time, because there are a lot of times we're like, I don't get along with them, so I'm just gonna avoid them. And then the next time you see them, there's kind of an eye roll and that happens in your heart. So I think by praying for them, giving it over to the Lord, the Lord does a work in you and it really does change the way you feel about that person. I'd encourage you to do that today, even as you've listened to us today. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. Thanks for being with us on Spectrum.